Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing cross body bag. Simple but very nice looking one. So let's start crafting it. You probably spotted already on my little intro. Um, we creating stuff under new banner qcrafted.com that's what's gonna be called it's gonna be blog for leather workers and everyone who likes a bit of creativity we're gonna transfer all our free patterns over there there will be a little bit of a premium patterns as well it's a new website so there is not much content right now but i'm working on it all right enough info let's go back to crafting uh, let's cut out the pattern. I use rotary cutter. I've got brand new rotary cutter uh, from Hemiline Gold. It's a good tool and nice looking one as well. But you need to buy some premium blades for it because the one which is included with the knife it needs to be replaced as soon as possible. My favorite part as usual, cutting corners. I will show you two techniques today uh, where you can cut the corner with punching tool or you can use a rotary cutter to cut it out. I use two thicknesses of a leather. For the back I use two millimeters and slightly thinner on the front but it's one and a half millimeter. And you still need to skive a little bit on that corner and when you finish uh, stitching that little corner uh, you need to cut off a little bit at the end so it folds nicely onto back part it's literally a couple millimeters on this uh, bag i decide to use o-rings which are 40 millimeters so we're gonna what shape this leather that's why I'm using veg tan leather on this one but obviously you can use different mounting for the strap and use D-rings or loops because it's cross body bag so you can have it on the belt itself the easiest way to create that shape is to use two extra rings one is bigger and one is smaller which will fit inside and the bigger one will fit on the outside and use a little bit of a bone creaser and a bit of weight so when it dries out you can use a punching tool to create the shape around it or you can actually use compass tool as well then use a rotary cutter to cut it out. When you wet shaping leather, it's always good to leave a bit of excess amount and cut it off at the end because the edge bends a little bit when you wet shaping the leather. If you enjoyed this video, please like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to our channel. It's a good time to crease the edges and we can start making holes for the stitching lines. And let's start dyeing leather. So I start from those little uh, O-rings and then continue on the main body. I'll put two layers of a dye on them. Then, when it slightly dries out, use Knit's foot oil to feed the leather after dyeing. When everything is nice and dry, I apply leather sheen from Fibbings. And I'm using cosmetic sponge to apply it. When I finish applying top coat, I receive a delivery from my leather supplier, so I'm gonna share it with you. I 
Look how well this company packed their product. Always when I receive a package from them, I feel like little kid unpacking a candy. So on to the leathers. First one is double butt, three and a half millimeters thick for the belt in tan color. The second and the third is graffiti leather. It's something new which I want to try. It's veg tan leather, only 1.3 millimeters thick. But look at the colors. I'm planning to do some duffel bags with it. And the spawnless beast at the end is a cherry on top of a cake. It's Shell Cordovan leather. Very pristine and very expensive as well. And back on to crafting. So everything is nice and dry. We did, uh, I actually forgot to record it. I did uh, finish on a flash side. Uh, with most back we're gonna do stitching on the inside and then we're gonna flip it around and do different with the back as usual I use saddle stitch technique After stitching those corners, flip it around and check if all the measurements are right. Then I mark with compass tool on the inside where I'm gonna put the glue on and I apply it with the brush. I know there is a better ways to do it, but I don't do it very often, so I use brush. The trick with uh, leather glue is always dry it out before you put it together. When you let uh, the glue dry out, look how easy it comes together. And besides that, it won't stick to anything else. After everything is uh, glued together, I put a couple clumps, just in case, uh, especially in the corners, and let it stick for about 10 minutes. And now use compass tool to mark the stitching lines. I stitch it off camera. Um, I've got a new machine, but it's standing in the kitchen at the moment, and it's a bit of a hassle to record it over there. It's good to stuff the bag out and use the bone creaser for the corners so you got the desirable shape. So the main bag is ready. Now it's time to fit in the lock and stitch in the O-rings at the back. I leave it with stuffing inside for a couple hours. I did some measurements and it worked out that the flap is a bit too long to fit the lock which I wanted. But don't worry about it, I changed the pattern before I release it. Before I fit the lock, let's make all the edges nice and smooth. We crease it first, then we're gonna use some sandpaper, and at the end we're gonna add tokono to it and polish it. When you dye your leather, sometimes uh, the dye won't go through all the way around. So when you sand it, you might have a little bit of a brighter color. So I 
re-dye the edges again. And as usual, apply top kernel. I always use it for all my products, and you know that from my other videos. The solution I chose for this bag is not perfect because I stitch the bag with the machine. So now I need to do hand stitching for the O-rings. But the problem with that is I can't fit O-rings before I stitch the bag itself because they're in a place that machine won't be able to access and uh, it's quite hard to stitch with the bug ready to go if you choose same solution as me just add one more hole on the back part of the bag on each side so the thread overlaps onto the fitting of our ring and now choices 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 i actually didn't know what type of a lock to use. I know more or less what I want, but there is quite a few of them. But I choose this brown one. I think it looks the best. For your bag, you can choose your own clamp. And another problem with prototyping, you need to fit lock for the bag, which is ready. So it's always access problem, like you can see here. Uh, this part got sharp parts on the back, so we're gonna glue on a little patch on top. But I mark the positions in the pattern, so we don't have that trouble. And you can fit your lock before the stitching. I got a little tip for you. When you're stitching something on the inside or you have to do some work in a bag, it's little great light which you can use it for jobs like this. Look how easy it is to see what you're stitching on the inside. Otherwise, it's too dark and you can't see nothing. I've got this light linked in the description below. So lock is fitted, we got O-rings in place. It's time to stuff the bag again and leave it for a little bit while we're doing the patch to cover the backside of a lock. Usually when I do patches like this I run the corners so you don't catch it and take it off and skive the edges so the edge is really small and you can't catch it as well. Glue it in, close the bag, stuff it out always and keep it stuffed for as long as you can. Polish it with a brush and use some feed on it and it's ready to go. Thanks for watching, hopefully see you soon.